India just made history. On August 23rd at 12.33 p.m. UTC, India's Chandrayaan-3 mission's robotic lander Vikram touched down on the moon near its south pole. The feat makes India the fourth nation to safely land a robotic explorer on the moon, and the first to do so near the moon's south pole, a region that scientists and explorers are eyeing with deep interest. It's not easy to land on the moon. In case you forgot, Russia's Luna 25 lander crashed into the moon and was destroyed a few days ago after an orbital maneuver went wrong. As Cosmos, Russia's space agency, had launched the probe on a mission to beat the ISRO to the moon's south pole. Unfortunately, Russia won the race, but not in the way it intended. This failure highlights that India is set to outstrip Russia as a space power in the 21st century. Let's see how everyone's reacting to the good news and how Russia is taking it. Only in today's episode of Great SpaceX. India has officially joined the Moon Landing Club. We have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon, ISRO Chairman Sridhar Samanath announced after the landing. This success belongs to all of humanity and it will help moon missions by other countries in the future, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said in a speech following the landing. A little over two hours after landing, ISRO posted images to X.com showing the moon's surface as seen by Chandrayaan three during its descent, adding that the agency has successfully established a communication link between the spacecraft and mission control. Praise from international space agency leadership is already pouring in on social media. The live broadcast of Chandrayaan-3 mission soft landing attracted nearly 70 million views and nearly 100,000 congratulatory comments within 14 hours. And as over 1.3 billion Indians erupted in celebration, congratulations Congratulatory messages also came from many countries worldwide. In a post on X.com, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson lauded the landing. Congratulations, ISRO, on your successful Chandrayaan-3 Lunar South Pole landing, Nelson wrote in the post. And congratulations to India on being the fourth country to successfully soft land a spacecraft on the moon. We're glad to be your partner on this mission. Meanwhile, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk also shared, Congratulations, India. Root for India. Good luck, Chandrayaan-3, Bezos posted on Instagram's Threads platform, commenting on ISRO's post. Earlier this week, Musk also praised India's Chandrayaan-3 mission by replying to a tweet. Kind of crazy when you realize India's budget for Chandrayaan-3 was $75 million and is less than the film Interstellar at $165 million. Good for India, he said. Aside from that, European Space Agency Director General Joseph Oshbacher stated he was impressed by ISRO's achievement in a post on X. Incredible. Congratulations to ISRO, Chandrayaan-3, and to all the people of India, Oshbacher wrote in the post. What a way to demonstrate new technologies and achieve India's first soft landing on another celestial body. Well done. I am thoroughly impressed. Taking a look back at this achievement, Chandrayaan-3's approximately 19-minute long lunar descent comprised four major phases. The first, the rough braking phase, began when the spacecraft was 30 kilometers above the moon in its orbit and about 750 kilometers downrange from its landing site. By firing all of its four 800 Newton main engines for about 12 minutes until it was at a 7-kilometer altitude, Chandrayaan-3 reduced reduced its high horizontal velocity of about 1.7 kilometers per second by some 80%. Next came a brief but crucial 10-second attitude hold phase, wherein the lander stabilized itself using its eight smaller thrusters to gain a steady view of the looming lunar surface for its various landing sensors. For height measurements, Chandrayaan-3 relied on two altimeters, one using lasers and the other using microwaves. While laser altimeters are commonly 
frequently employed by several lunar landers, they can report anomalous heights at times if, say, a lander passes over mountainous terrain or large craters. Instead, the microwave altimeter's wide footprint allowed Chandrayaan-3 to better tolerate abrupt changes in altitude, explains Priyanka Marotra of SAC, who is the lead system designer of Chandrayaan-3's KA-band microwave altimeter. Chandrayaan-3's redundant altimetry is especially pertinent because of the role laser altimetry played during the failed April 25th touchdown of iSpace's first lunar lander. After its fraught attitude hold phase, Chandrayaan-3 entered a three-minute fine braking phase, in which it used only two of its four main engines to descend up to roughly 850 meters above the moon's surface and briefly hovered there. This pause gave the lander a chance to capture pictures of the surface and compare them to preloaded onboard satellite images to determine whether it was above its desired landing region. Chandrayaan 3's target landing zone spans 4 by 2.5 kilometers. ISRO scientists and engineers divided it into 3,900 equal sized subsections, meticulously assessed the safety level of each for a landing, and loaded it into the lander as reference information. At this point, Chandrayaan 3 must have taken one of these two decisions. If it found itself above its predetermined landing zone, the onboard computer would have identified the safest feasible subsection area, then accordingly proceeded toward touchdown. If Chandrayaan-3 found itself elsewhere, it would have proceeded with an autonomous landing based on self-identified hazards from its imagery instead of the pre-programmed subsection-based landing. Confirmation of which decision was taken will be known after ISRO determines the landing site. In the final terminal descent phase, Chandrayaan-3 lowered itself to about 150 meters above the surface and then hovered again for about half a minute to assess the area below for landing hazards. At this point, since the surface right below the lander didn't look safe, the lander sought a safer adjacent area and deviated to touchdown there. Finally, on touchdown, sensors on the lander's legs triggered the shutdown of its main engines. Chandrayaan-3 now stands tall on the moon. ISRO designed the lander's legs to absorb most of the mechanical shock from the touchdown. The agency tested the legs on lunar simulant test beds on Earth to ensure that the lander could tolerate a high vertical velocity of 3 meters per second and even a horizontal velocity of 1 meter per second if it were to touch down askew. Chandrayaan-3 landed near the lunar south pole shortly after local sunrise. Doing so maximizes the mission's surface operations lifetime to an entire period of lunar daylight, which is about two weeks in Earth days since the lander and the rover it will deploy are both solar-powered. To begin Chandrayaan-3's surface science mission, Vikram will activate its four onboard instruments and deploy the rover via a ramp to start exploring the geologically rich landing region. Region. Congrats to ISRO and the whole team involved in this successful mission. This is an important technical and historical achievement for India, and we all should be very proud. On the other hand, while the whole world is celebrating India, Russia seems not to be in a celebratory mood. If the dueling landers weren't symbolic enough, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi celebrated ISRO's success at a meeting of leaders of BRICS or B. BRICS countries, which include Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, that Russian leader Vladimir Putin was forced to skip due to his indictment for war crimes by the International Criminal Court. The isolation imposed on Russia after its invasion of Ukraine has left its space program already faltering without the technology and funding to mount ambitious missions in space. India, meanwhile, has invested in a series of important science missions and is backing a growing private space sector that seeks to compete with the US and China, the world's leading producers of space technology. Measuring space power isn't straightforward. There's no doubt that Russia Russia has a rich history of space activities, and its Soyuz rockets remain a global benchmark for reliable access to space. The country still plays a vital role in operating the International Space Station still, but after years of underinvestment by Russia, the cracks are showing. 
quite literally. Small fissures have been appearing in one of the Russian modules at the habitat, causing it to leak breathable air and forcing complex repair efforts. In 2018, a hole was discovered drilled into a Russian spacecraft, which Roscosmos tried to blame on a US astronaut. Two different Russian spacecraft have been struck by orbital debris, which might be bad luck, except for suspicions that the space junk was generated by destructive tests of Russian anti-satellite missiles. Allegations of corruption at the space agency are common in Russian media. The sorry state of Moscow's space program is just the latest confirmation of that. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.